This is Debbie Woodruff coming to you live from the corner of Anderson and Wilder, where just moments ago a fire has erupted, leaving three dead and possibly two others wounded. I have with me Officer Douglas Danforth of Precinct 26. Officer Danforth? Uh, yes, Debbie. Officer, early reports have indicated that these deaths are organized crime related. Can you confirm this? Uh, it would certainly seem so, Debbie. The victims were all known to be affiliated with the Parigi crime family. As you know, the family has been torn by a bloody power struggle since last month's death of the recruited godfather, Roberto Parigi. So, do you have positive identifications on these victims? Uh, we won't be positive until we can check the dental records, but these men were well known around the neighborhood as well as the family in court. But just tonight, I've been speaking with some local residents, and they seem very reluctant to say anything about these men. Is that for fear of reprisals? I'm going to have to say partially. Despite his troubles, the Parigi family remains a force in this community. Certainly nobody wants to go on record identifying these men as criminals. But you also have to realize that the community, these men are commanded. They got respect in the community. But that money, does that come at, at a price? Uh, they're family men, and absolutely it does come at a price. We're talking business loans at up to 50% interest, and believe me, if you didn't pay on time, you won't be uh, very lucky. I see. Uh, do you have any leads on who might want these men dead? Uh, right now, our best guess is it was an inside job, perhaps linked to the reports that an internal battle... Oh my God! So wait a second. Do you see these deaths as the end of a bloody power struggle or just the beginning? Uh, right with organizations may see this uh, as their chance to rid themselves of the Parigi family once and for all. So what you're saying is the community can rest easy tonight. Uh, I wish I knew, Debbie. In the meantime, residents in the community will surely feel increased police presence. We're on top of the matter, and I'd like to stress that nobody in this community has anything to fear. Thank you very much, Officer Danforth. Again, three are dead, two are wounded, and the culprits are still at large. From the corner of Anderson and Wilder, this is Debbie Woodruff. Back to you in the studio. And one more thing I might say, if you can tune in this evening and make sure if you have any news or any speculation on who these men might be, please call our studio and let us know as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Back to you, Bob. This hearing is called to order. We have called together this committee to investigate violence on television and its effects on young people. Ms. Reno, you may begin. Well, I feel it is only fitting to begin with the worst offender. That's why I have subpoenaed Mr. Wild E. Coyote. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, but my name is no longer Wild E. Coyote, but Will E. Coyote, because Wild E. is a much name, and I am not a dog. I think that this trial is a joke, and I have been railroaded. Mr. Coyote, do you know why you're here? Something about, you know, I didn't pay my child support or something like that, you know. But hey, man, it's hard for coyotes, you know what I'm saying, man? With this whole Jurassic Park, you know, jumping off, they didn't ask me to do a part. Roo, roo. This has nothing to do with child support. You are accused of portraying irresponsible violence on television. Man, you know what? Why are you coming down on a working dog like me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I just don't understand. You know, I go to the mall, I have to deal with all these little kids and all this other kind of stuff. Look, I ain't even got no genitals. You know how, that, you know how hard it is on me? <laughs> well, Mr. Coyote, do you have any legal representation? Well, I certainly have. 
Is council present? He sure is. State your name for the record. My name is Alma J. Fudd. I'm a warrior and a big game hunter. Yeah, he got skills. I mean, you know, he's still trying to, you know, get that hooked on phonics class going on. I would like to submit that my client has never, ever set a bad example for children. My client loves children. That's what I'm saying, you know, because, like, uh, I used to have my own little theme park, you know, with, you know, like a little Ferris wheel and everything like that, and then somebody investigated something about, you know, I had, you know, molested a child or something like that. But, you know, hey. He only sniffed him. That's exactly right. You know, we just slept together. Nothing ever happened, you know what I'm saying? Nothing ever happened. We were just sleeping together, you know what I'm saying? Mr. And Coyote. Snoopy, and Mr. Co- Mr. Coyote. Me. He had some honey on him. What? <laughs> Mr. Coyote, you've influenced millions of kids. How do you account for the 14-year-old boy who held up this sign right before jumping off the edge of the Grand Canyon? Oh, oh, oh. You're gonna blame that on me, huh? You gonna blame that on me? Let me tell, let me tell you something, man. That's some old school stuff. We don't even do that no more. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm just a canine trying to get paid. Shh. Be very, very quiet. You might incriminate yourself. <laughs> swallowing accordions because of this coyote. Oh, that's a lie. I ain't never swallowed an accordion in my entire life. <laughs> Y'all just singling me out because I'm a brother. Are you insinuating racial bias here? That's what I'm saying, because ain't no other tunes out there with Daffy Duck, Heckling Joker. Hey, where's that, uh, where's that honky cast for the friendly ghost? You know what I'm saying? Where's Blueberry Hound and his blue ass? You're out of order. I'm out of order. You're out of order. She's out of order. The whole That's about enough, Counselor Fudd. Now, do you have anything to say on your client's behalf? Senators, I submit to you my client is guilty of no wrongdoing, but in actuality, it is the fault of the Acme Company where he gets his supplies. Yeah, you tell him, Elmer. Take, for example, this bird seed. Now, look, Mr. Bobo would have it where uh, if, if a roadrunner would eat this bird seed, he'd be fine. But if, uh, if I'm chasing a roadrunner all day and then I eat a little bird seed, look at this. Look what happens to me. These are earthquakes. That's exactly my point. It's Miss Waywood. And then and, and, and take a look at this umbrella. It's very, very flimsy. Yeah. Now, this is supposed to protect my hair from falling objects. Mr. Coyote, you can put that away. Nothing's going to fall on your head Well, here. you never know when something might fall on your head because of this. There it is. See, all I get is chuckles. That's all I get is chuckles, man. You know, I'm tired of this, man. They're just chuckling and laughing at me, man. You know, I just want some respect. I don't want no money, no change. You know, I just want to tell from... You're out of order. Gentlemen, I find it hard to believe that these lovely Acme products are at fault. I mean, if what you say is true, I can simply come here and press down on this harmless detonator with no battery and no dynamite and... No! I told you. <laughs> you are strong, you are beautiful, you are perfect. Welcome once again to the show by for and about women. Oh, All right. I'm your host, Shawanda Harvey. Many of you have read my book, Eve Stands Alone, in which I celebrate the independence of women. I go one step further with my new book, Adam, Take Back Your Damn Rib. (laughs) All right. Our topic for today's show is the always controversial Madonna. Is she helping to empower women, or is she allowing herself to be exploited in a man's world? Please welcome my guest. To my right is Sandra Bernhardt. All right. Sandra, you are strong, you are beautiful, you are perfect. Oh, don't I know it, sister. I am fabulous. <laughs> and to my left is Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie, you are strong, you are strong, you are strong. Thanks, you want it. You too, babe. All right. Well, uh, now, uh, sisters, you both know Madonna. Uh, Madonna and I used to be good friends, you know. But then she dumped me and decided to go slumming. <laughs> 
Carter were in the movie A League of Their Own. Now, that was a celebration of the equality of women. You bet your perfect little boobies, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's obvious Madonna is a perfect example of a woman who has done it her way. Oh, God. believe me, baby, this slut has done it every way, okay? <laughs> Man, she's done it with men, without men, with women, without women, with men who used to be women, with German shepherds. Okay, okay. Stop. <laughs> The point is, she used men when it suited her and trashed them any time she felt like well, it. Well, trash is the operative word here, okay? She is trash that will not burn, sister, okay? You'll find out. When she is through with you, she'll dump you like a Chevy Chase talk show. <laughs> Looks like somebody took a little bitter pill this morning. Oh, take uh, this girl, that O'Donnell. No, 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 please. Right sisters, sisters, sisters. <laughs> Let's try to keep this from getting personal. Now, in the spirit of sisterhood, let's hear a go on, girl. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. All right. We're talking about Madonna as a role model for other women. Now, it would appear to me at times that uh, she seems to allow herself to be sexually exploited by men. Well, I think he got that backwards. Oh, God, she's done it backwards. She's done it forwards. She's done it sideways. She's done it like in a circle. You, you are still pissed because she dumped you for Warren Beatty, okay? Oh, please. I am twice the man Warren Beatty will ever be. <laughs> Maybe he's got something you don't. <laughs> oh, that may be, big girl, but if I don't have it, I can rent it, sister. Oh, well, 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 now there seems to be no way to keep this discussion from getting personal. The message would seem to be that it is great for a woman to be independent, but there's a fine line between putting men in their place and being a, well, you know, <laughs> I'm Shawanda Harvey. Goodbye and go gone, girl. girl. Katie Cannon, welcome to the show. Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub, splashing and washing away. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Why are all the good looking men gay? <laughs> That's a gem. Now let's see if our special friend is called yet. You know, I met him at Snooky's Bar and he promised. Let's ask Mr. Phone Machine. Girl, now you know ain't nobody called you. <laughs> Well, I guess the word for today is liar. L-I-A-R, <laughs> liar. And guess what, kids? Now it's time to say hi to our old friend, Mr. Clock. Hey, you know, just clocking up. <laughs> hi, Mr. Clock. What's up? What time is it? What time is it? It's time for you to have some kids. <laughs> You see, children, he's a biological clock. That's why he says all those mean things. Yeah, Candy, you need to hurry up, because you ain't got enough eggs to make a two-egg omelet. <laughs> Shut up, you liar. L-I-A-R, <laughs> liar. -L -I -A -R, now tell my little poem before I buy a swatch. No problem. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. Uh -huh. The clock struck eight. You said your period was late. The next day, he moved to the next state. Hey. <laughs> Couldn't put them back together again. <laughs> well, kids, now it's the time to bring up prehistoric creature, our old friend Jurassic Benny. Hi, Candy Cane. Hi, Benny. Do you know what time it is? Time for your flat to have some kids. <laughs> oh, listen, Big Ben, if you didn't shoot blanks, I wouldn't have this problem. Come on, everybody. Let's do the Benny dance. Okay. <laughs> Don't you know what time it is? It's two minutes till menopause. <laughs> you should know about two minutes, Mr. Clock. <laughs> you know something, Betty? I love you. Yeah? <laughs> I love you. Yeah, well, I love you too, Candy, but I'm not in love with you. <laughs> but you said you were going to leave your wife and marry me. No, 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 I never said that. You're a liar. <laughs> well, you sing a different tune after a six-pack and a quart of personal lubricant. You do face Wait a minute, double, a... double crossing what? What you talking about? You know I got a restraining order against you. Now stop talking all this trash. Stop calling my house. And I know you was the one that boiled my little girl's rabbit. And you messed with my jack one more time. I'll put my prehistoric foot so far up your behind, you're going to be coughing up shoelaces. <laughs> 
you get out of here and you take all your crap with you, mister. I'll meet you at the Akana Lodge. You can take your lunch book and your album. Oh. I don't need you. Why don't you just hold her, man? I ain't holding that hoe. <laughs> and users and insensitive pigs and horny, worthless, macho lowlifes. Well, kids, I guess it's just us. But you're not even my real kids. <laughs> I'll never have kids. I'm destined to pick cat hair out of my lean cuisine. <laughs> Join us tomorrow, boys and girls, for another adventure in Candyland with Candy K. <laughs> To me at work today. Let me guess, Ralph. You stepped in the back of a bus and it popped a wheelie. No, oh, honey, honey, you're a regular riot. No, look at this. Take a look. Earl Johnson's retiring. So? So? Earl Johnson's a dispatcher. That means they gotta give me his job. An extra eight bucks a week, Alice. On an extra eight bucks a week, we are gonna be living large. You've been living live since birth, Ralph. That's funny, Alice. You're real funny. You're a regular MC Weisenheimer. Now listen, my boss is coming over here tonight. So, uh, what's for dinner? TV Dennis. TV Dennis? TV Dennis? You can't serve the head of a bus company, TV Dennis. You're right, Ralph. I won't. Alice, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> nice weave, Alice. Now step, step. <laughs> Ralphie, my boy, you need to find yourself another freak. And you got back, what can I tell you? Which is whack. It's whack. <laughs> now, uh, so what up, Pone Slice? Norton, you gotta help me. My boss is coming over here tonight, and uh, he's black, and I don't know the first thing about being hip. I'm gonna hook you up. Okay, the first thing you need to know is uh, the handshake or dap as the brothers call it. Handshake, all right? Here it comes. Huh? Would you come on? I'm coming back. All right, here we go. Back down. Up, on. Pull it and step it. Jeez. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's a lot of work to do, Norton, just to shake hands. I think I lost about four pounds here. Look at it this way, Ralph. Greet ten people at eight. You'll be able to see your toes by Christmas. Okay, now, I assume that he's your boss, and uh, he probably went to one of them... Uh, Black colleges, uh, probably one of them uh, fraternity brats. So I'm going to show you some of their step moves. Now watch closely, Ralph. Right? Whoa, watch my remote, Ralph. Okay. I'll bust a cap in your right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Ralph, don't worry about it. I got you covered. All right, all right. Ah, Mr. Williams, sir. Hey, Cramden, sorry I'm late. I had to come all the way across town from the suburbs. I, uh... Ah, salami lakeum. What? Ah, uh, well, uh, you did go to college, right, Mr. Williams? What are you getting at, Cramden? Well, well uh, we just wanted to make you feel at home, if you know what I mean. We find me! You for you! You for you! Roll! Hey! What the hell is wrong with you, man? Cramden, I'm insulted, man. What is on your mind? The dude is bugging, Ralph. He's bugging. I, 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 we thought this was the kind of thing that went on at black colleges, that's all. As a matter of fact, I went to Princeton. Just one like that, Ralph. He's an aerial. <laughs> Princeton. I didn't know. You know, I had no idea how ignorant you were. I guess I'm not going to get that uh, dispatcher job, huh? What are you, crazy? 
The reason I came all the way over here tonight was to ask you to speak at Earl Johnson's retirement dinner. Hamana, 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 You blew this one. You can't even get that together. Hey, have a good night. You and Vanilla Ice. <laughs> You hey, forgot your hat, bro! <laughs> well, fine. I know this may be a bad time, but, uh, is there any more liquor in the house? <laughs> Would you get out of here? Okay. The next time I see you, you can inject swing on you know what? Get out of here! <laughs> Before I get my gauge! Ralph, I just saw Mr. Williams storming out of here. What happened? I'll tell you what happened, Alice. I got a big mouth! Amongst other things. Look, Alice. The only reason I wanted that promotion in the first place was so I could buy you a new pair of Timberland boots and a Raiders jacket. So sweet. Oh, Ralph, you know I'll always be your Hootie Mac. Baby, you're the dopest. <laughs> There's six million ways to laugh. Choose one. No. <laughs>